Okay, problem three. Problem three, given two particles with Q equals 2.3 microcoulombs, charges are shown in the figure below, and a particle with charge Q equals 1.7 times 10 to the negative 18th. Wow, that's pretty small. Pretty small. Assume a reference potential of V equals zero at infinity. Okay. What is the net force exerted by the two? Okay, so this is the pretty much the definition of a test charge. A test charge is assumed to be massless, infinitely small, and uh, very small charge. Did I say charge already? I'm going to say charge again. So the idea is we have 10 to the negative 18th and 10 to the negative 6th. 10 to the negative 18th is pretty much negligible by comparison. So the idea here is what is the net force exerted by the two 2.3 times 10 to the negative 6 Coulomb charges. All right, so for the charge on the left, it's going to repel and push the particle this way. Particle on the left, did I say left before? I don't know. Particle on the left is going to push to the right. They're exactly identical, exactly the same distance apart. So they are going, since they are vectors, they are going to cancel each other out. What is the electric field? All right, electric field, same idea. Electric field is also a vector. Uh, electric fields are generally used to find force. So you could say that uh, force equals the electric field times Q. Electric field, these are vectors, equals KQ over R squared, R hat. Okay? What is the electric field of the origin? Uh, the two exactly cancel each other out. Same as four. They're, they're both repelling. What is the electric potential at the origin? Do? Okay, now this one, this part's a little bit different. So electric potential is a scalar. So scalars, you can't add that together. So, uh, I might actually have to do some math on this one. So electric potential, electric potential, potential energy difference. Don't get that reference. Problem one is K Q over R. Okay? Where K is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. And then Q is 2.3 times 10 to the negative sixth. And then R, I think it's like 0 0.8. 0 0.8. So I'm going to write this as 8 times 10 to the negative first, which goes to 10 to the first up here. 9 plus 1 is 10. 10 minus 6 is 4. Okay. And then, yep, go to Wolfram. 8.99, nope, times 10, no, times 2.3 times 10 to the fourth divided by 8. And then I'm going to multiply by 2 in here. The reason I multiply by 2 is because we're going to have two of these. I really just skipped a step. For here, right here, I calculated um, the one on the right or the one on the left. It doesn't matter because they're both the same. They're both the same. There's both the same Q's, both the same R's, both the same the K's. Um, just because they're on opposite sides, it doesn't matter because we're talking about scalars not vectors. And we get, let's see, we're supposed to probably find kilovolts, kilovolts. So I'm going to call this 51.69. So I'm going to call it 51.7. 51.7 kilovolts, or as I like to call it, kilojoules per coulomb. All right? Make sense? Good. Yeah. On to the next one, number four.